Hello, it looks like we're live. Welcome, welcome, my friends. Want to make sure that everybody is seeing this. So let me just check in the chat real quick. Um, and I do have my awesome assistant, Kenny, who's going to be manning the chat with me today. So he's going to be answering your questions and making sure you guys are heard. But hey, hello, welcome. Super excited that you're all here right now. My name is Melissa from melissagriffin.com. And you may be familiar with me. Maybe you've been to my webinars before, or maybe this is your first one, in which case I would love it if you left a comment in the chat so I could shout you out right now. Um, but I teach a lot of workshops and e-courses for bloggers and online entrepreneurs. So today's topic, we are talking about how to find your niche as a blogger, why it's one of the most important things that you'll do as a blogger, and also how to get started with blogging. What are the beginning steps you should take? What are things that you should keep in mind if you really want to be successful quickly? So let me just make sure. OK, good. It looks like people are able to see this. Oh, fantastic. We got a lot of first timers here. So I see Lisa. I see Mikhail. Is that how you say your name? Lori, Jessica, Glennie, Christine, Kelly. Awesome. Is it? Okay, cool. Heather, Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, I think you've been before. Um, I'm not sure what that name is. It's a cool screen name though. I'm checking out the chat. All right. Well, I'm very happy that you all are here right now. And thank you if this is your first time here. And if you've been to my webinars before, thank you for coming back. I know that uh, we've got an amazing community in the chat and I hope you're going to learn a lot from this webinar too. So without further ado, my friends, uh, looks like we're ready to get cranking here. And let's see. Make sure that we're all good. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen with you right now and we're gonna get started on today's presentation. Okay. Here we go. All right, so hopefully you're in the right place, how to find your perfect niche and get a running start as a blogger. Once again, I'm Melissa Griffin from melissagriffin.com and we are about to dive right into today's presentation. Now, if you want to share anything from today's presentation, I'd love to see a picture of your notes. That's kind of a little tradition that we've got going down over here, where you take a picture of your notes, you post them onto Instagram or Twitter, and then you can use the hashtag blog to biz, and then we'll be able to find each other's tweets and Instagram posts, and I'll be able to give you a virtual high five. Now, my friends, let's do this. So I want you to really be present today. You owe it to yourself to learn this material. There's a reason you signed up, a reason you made the space in your life to come to this workshop. So don't do yourself a disservice by having a million tabs open with social media, your cell phone on notifications, and having just a bunch of distractions in your way from actually retaining this information and learning it. And also you want to stay tuned until the end. So make sure that you're here until the end of the presentation. I do have some special surprises just for people who stick around for the end of the presentation, not available for the replay, just for people who are here live and stick around till the very end. Now, my friends, you're in the right place. If you're not sure if you really need to pick a niche or whether or not boxing yourself into one topic would really be beneficial for you and your blog. You're also in the right place if you like talking about multiple topics on your blog and you struggle to find one that you could create consistent content on. So you got a lot of ideas here, but you're like, I don't know if I could just do one thing forever. You're also in the right place if you need help getting started as a blogger and wish you had a clear path or system to follow. If you knew the right steps to take or how to battle that overwhelming feeling of, oh my goodness, there's too much to do. We're going to cover that today as well. Now, I want to share a little case study with you of my own niche experience. So March 2015, now I started my blog in 2013, by the way, and I really didn't start it with a niche in mind. I blogged about all kinds of topics. So in March 2015, especially, my content was all over the place. I blogged about things like travel, DIY projects, my dog, <laughs> of all things, um, self-development, and just a medley of different topics that didn't really connect together. They were mo more so just things that I was interested in. 
At that time, I had 84,000 monthly page views, so March 2015. And you might be sitting there thinking, that's actually not too bad. I'd, I'd love to have 84,000 monthly page views. But let me tell you that to get there, I had over 500 blog posts and I was blogging four to five times a week, which is not a very sustainable strategy. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever written 500 blog posts, but it takes an incredibly long time. And I realized that I could be spending my time doing other things to grow my blog, my audience, and my income faster than spending all my time writing blog posts. So 84,000 page views might sound good to you, but I had a bajillion blog posts to help me get there, which is why I was able to get to that point. And I had about 2,500 email subscribers. So again, I put in a ridiculous amount of time creating content, and it didn't have an enormous payoff. Now, June 2015, so two months after March 2015, in May, I started really honing in on my niche, which is what you see on my blog and website today. So June 2015, just one month after honing in on my niche, I selected a specific niche and was able to double my monthly page view. So in March 2015, I had about 80,000 page views. And in June 2015, I doubled it to 160,000 page views. I also grew my email list to about 7,000 email subscribers just in that three month period, which is an enormous amount of growth in a really short amount of time. And I know that a lot of that had to do with picking a niche. So now one year later, I only post three to four blog posts a month. So back in the beginning when I was posting a ridiculous amount of content, I was posting four to five times a week. Now I post once a week or less. My page views, 250,000 monthly page views. And I recently hit 50,000 email subscribers. So I truly do not believe that this kind of rapid and enormous growth would have been possible so quickly if I had not selected a niche because I was just kind of like pedaling in the waters out there hoping that people would enjoy my content until I had this light bulb moment when I realized that I needed to hone in on my niche if I wanted to reach more people. So if we have not met before, I wanna give you a brief intro to me. This is not gonna be the kind of webinar where I spend 20 minutes talking about my life story. I'm gonna give you one slide, so here we go. I'm Melissa. I want to tell you kind of the background of why I know what I'm about to teach you today. So I created a multiple six-figure business in less than three years, completely through my blog. I grew my email list from 2,000 to 30,000 subscribers in one year. And now my email list is at about 50,000 email subscribers. I've taught over 2,000 paying online course students. So I've got a lot of people who have taken my courses out there. I also host a Facebook group with 13,000 members. You might be a member of that group too. It's an amazing, positive community. And all this is to say that I started my blog on a $30,000 a year salary working as a teacher with a full-time job. So I didn't start with a bunch of money. I didn't start with any followers. I started at zero, just like you. Now, what you're going to learn today First, the facts behind selecting a niche. So by the time we're finished today, I think you'll be convinced. You'll also learn how to find your perfect niche as a blogger that you'll love creating content for that won't feel like a chore and that won't feel like, ugh, I don't know what to create content for, this is too specific, etc. You'll also learn the beginning steps that bloggers should take in order to get a running start online and a system to follow to help you reach your blogging goals fast. Now, let's do this, my friends. Type yes in the chat box if you're excited to learn about finding a niche and getting started as a blogger. We are about to dive into the content today, so type a big ol' yes in the chat box. I wanna get pumped, I want you to be pumped. I'm excited to present this material to you. I see a flood of yeses coming in, really excited. And I also noticed we've got almost 400 peeps in the house today, which is truly incredible. I'm so thankful to have you all here with me today. I see an of course. I love it. All right, my friends, let's dive in. Let's do this. So do you really need a niche as a blogger? Let's be honest, yo. 
All right, let's take these two sites. And this is one of my favorite analogies to give you. So we've got blog A over here on the left. They blog about music, DIY projects, travel, self-development, pets, and recipes, which by the way, are things I all used to blog about on my own blog. And then on the right, we have blog B, who only blogs about veganism. Only blog is about veganism compared to blog A, who has a medley of assorted topics. Now, let's say that our friend Amanda, we'll call her, sees this pin, this image on Pinterest, or discovers this blog post on Google, 10 vegan breakfast ideas. So imagine that Amanda just stumbled upon this pin or this blog post somewhere on the internet. Now, Amanda is interested in veganism. So she finds this particular blog post on blog A, remember the blog that has a medley of different topics, then they're going to think, wow, super helpful blog post. I'm really into this content. That totally gave me a lot of ideas. So then Amanda's going to think, okay, this post was really helpful. I'm starting to get into veganism. I want to learn more about being a vegan. So she decides to browse around. And what does she find? Oh, a lot of content that's completely irrelevant to Amanda's vegan interest. So she's like, oh, what's all this stuff? There's posts about self-development and travel and DIY projects. And she's thinking, I mean, this looks cool, but I came here to learn more about veganism. So she's going to say peace out because this blog is not fulfilling her needs. So if you are blogging about a medley of different topics, you're taking a gamble that people are going to love all of those different topics. In reality, what's going to happen is people are going to come to your blog just to read about specific topics. So do you want people to come to your blog because they love your entire blog or because they like that topic you blog about once a month, right? Now, if Amanda goes to blog B, new fan. So again, she sees the blog post, the 10 vegan breakfast ideas, and she thinks, wow, super helpful. She decides to browse around again, but in this case, whoa, hold the phone. So much good stuff that's completely relevant to her as a new vegan because this entire blog is focused on veganism, if you remember. So we've got vegan tips, vegan recipes, a vegan getting started guide. There's so much good stuff that's completely relevant to Amanda's passion and interest in becoming a vegan. So Amanda's likely to subscribe to this person's email list likely to share the blog posts that she discovers, and she's likely to become a potential customer in the future if you are selling something through your blog that's related to veganism. So I hope you can see the distinction here with this kind of analogy between blog A and blog B and the pros and cons of going either way. Obviously, blog A doesn't really have a niche. Blog B, of course, has a specific niche, veganism. So narrow your focus. Now, at their core, every content creator, like bloggers, should be solving a problem. Why do people come to you? What's the point? What are you solving for them that they want to come to your blog to figure out? You also want to stand out as a leader, which is great for money making. So blog A, of course, the one that has a medley of topics, not really standing out in any field, right? But blog B eventually could stand out as a leader in the online vegan world. And this is great for money making because if you're going to be selling something in the future, then you stand out more as an authority or an online leader just naturally in the vegan world. You become a go-to hub in your niche. So people say, oh, you're interested in veganism? You should check out so-and-so's blog because they have great tips on getting started as a vegan. So people start to recommend you. You become the go-to person for that specific topic. And it just became, becomes this spiral effect where you stand out as the authority and leader. You also create content that your audience loves rather than content that feels mostly irrelevant. I mean, what's the point of writing a blog post when only 20% of your audience wants to read it? And it's easier, again, to eventually sell products or services because people see you as that, quote, expert or leader in your niche. So would you rather be the go-to leader in your niche or someone who struggles to grow their tribe and income? Now, choosing a niche will make your blog more profitable faster. Don't forget my personal case study of how I picked a niche and then saw rapid growth in a very short amount of time. And some other benefits, 
you'll make it easier for the right people to fall in love with your content. Because maybe there are people who would love your blog, who are already visiting your blog, but you're just not blogging about the things that are really relevant to them. So if you focus on those one specific, that one specific topic, then you're able to wrangle those people in and keep them around. Audience growth happens way faster this way. And it often becomes easier for you to create consistent, useful content because now you're not thinking about the entire world of topics that you could pull from. Now you just have this one niche and you're able to think about specific things rather than just general topics that you could blog about within that specific niche. Now the point is this. You can reach a lot more people if you write about a lot less things. I'm going to say that one more time. The point is this. You can reach a lot more people if you write about a lot less things. And now this is not to say that you can't be, enjoy other topics. Maybe you write about a lot of topics on your blog because you love all those topics. It doesn't mean that if you hone in on one of those topics that you don't love the others or that you can't add them into your life in some other way. It just means that if you want to create a business out of your blog and really grow a strong tribe and audience, then you need to hone in on one specific topic. But what about bloggers who don't have a niche but have a zillion followers? I'm sure we all have somebody in our mind right now that kind of fits that bill. What about the people who do talk about a ton of things but seem to have a really steady income and a lot of people who follow them? Well, consider that those people are generally have been bloggers for a very long time. Like I'm talking 10 years. I don't know about you, but I would rather create a profitable blog in one year than spending 10 years trying to build an audience by talking about too many things. So it often takes quite a few years before becoming successful. Now, how to find your perfect niche. So how you, know, you understand that having a niche is important, but how do you find one that you want to follow that you could create content on every week or every month that you would really love to have as your niche? So there are actually two types of general niches that you could choose a topic niche which only blogs about a specific topic or a demographic niche where you blog about multiple topics, but they're hyper focused on a specific audience. Now more people are going to fall under the demographic niche, but I want you to be careful. So think of it this way. A topic niche could be a blog all about clear skin tips. So how to get rid of acne or things like that. So it's all about clear skin. It could be people of any age, any race, any gender, but it's all about getting clear skin. Now, a demographic niche could be people who are interested in ethical beauty. So you could have different topics besides just clear skin, things like DIY beauty products or research about ethical beauty standards or natural clear skin remedies or how to change your diet so that you can have clearer, more glistening or glowing skin. So I hope you kind of see the difference here. The topic niche is a little bit more specific. We don't necessarily care as much about the people who are reading. It's more about the topic that you're blogging about. And then demographic niche is you really have a specific person in mind who is going to want to read about all of these different topics because they're interested in this kind of general topic idea. So if you've ever been on my blog, I have more of a demographic niche. I think this kind of confuses people sometimes when I talk about niches because I do talk about a lot of topics. I talk about email marketing, social media, uh, creating e-courses, how to make money as a blogger, how to grow your audience, which are a lot of different things. But it all goes back to that demographic niche where all of my blog posts are relevant to aspiring bloggers and online entrepreneurs. But be careful with demographic niches. Don't use this as an excuse to start a lifestyle blog and say, well, I'm going to start a demographic niche because all of those people are interested in the same lifestyle. You want to be more specific than that. And consider that you want to make sure that it's only going to be relevant to that specific type of person and not other people out there in the world. Now let's talk about your niche formula. So I think a niche formula has three components. 
starting with your passion. So what are you actually interested in? I would never suggest creating a blog on something that you don't actually enjoy writing about or creating content on. Your skill. So what are you talented in? What are you good at? What do you like doing? What are some things that you create for your blog that you love to do? And what do your people need? Or what do people in general need if you haven't quite grown an audience yet? So where is that intersection between your passion, your skill, and what your people need? So for me, my passion was helping people, helping people find what they love to do, which is why I got into this niche of helping bloggers. And my skill is teaching. I love teaching. And I think I'm good at conveying the ideas and the things that I've learned as a blogger. And then what my people need, I discovered that a lot of bloggers need help getting started and monetizing their blog. So your skills and your intersection and your passions and all those things might be a little bit kind of random things from your past or things that you've done throughout your life that you didn't really realize had to do with blogging. I used to be a high school teacher and I didn't really understand how that would fit into blogging. But teaching is my passion and now I've seen that teaching webinars and Facebook Live and e-courses is my skill and I've been able to bring that into my blog. Also focus on your intuition. I don't think we do this quite enough. So what do you enjoy blogging about most? And what doesn't feel like a chore or something that you think you should be blogging about? So what are the things that you actually love to blog about? Maybe you're talking about a lot of topics on your blog right now, and maybe some of them are topics that you're just talking about because you feel like you should. I talked about DIY projects on my blog for two years, and I don't even like DIY projects. I just felt like I should include them because a lot of bloggers talk about DIY projects. So I don't want you to do that because it's going to make you burn out and you're not gonna focus in on a niche that you actually love and are passionate about. And consider that it's okay to start with a lot of topics. I don't want you to leave today kind of confused, still working through what your niche should be and then just pick something and then hate it. It's okay to have quite a few topics in the beginning, but then after two or three months of blogging about those various topics, really deciding on what your niche should be. So don't postpone that for two years like I did. I want you to really pick a niche as soon as you can, but don't rush it if you need some time to blog about several different topics before discovering what you're truly passionate about. Now also consider who is your target market? So you need to know who you're creating your content for. Now think of your target market, which is basically like your ideal audience. Think of them as one specific person. And even better if you actually know somebody in your head that falls into this target market, the kind of person that you're blogging for. Because we wanna think of one person rather than thinking of your audience as this big blob. Like, okay, I have an audience. It's just a big blob of people. You wanna think of them as just one specific person so that every time you create content, you can run it by that person in your head and say, would my person find this useful and relevant? And that way you know that you're staying on target with your niche and you're creating content that people will actually love reading. Now let's chat about the steps that you should take to create a successful blog. Number one, create killer content. Now your audience's pain points are so important to touch on. So in order to create standout content, it has to solve a problem for your audience. Now consider informational versus inspirational content. I talked about this recently on my blog, but basically informational content is something that has a clear takeaway, like a how-to post or a tutorial or something where you're teaching something to your audience versus inspirational content, which is more motivational. You're offering some ideas and inspiration, but not really how-to strategies or tutorials. So I recommend adding in at least some informational content into your blog, because that's gonna really help to heal your audience's pain points, which is going to make them obsessed with your blog. Because if you're helping them get rid of one of their problems, even if one of their problems is something as simple as, I have no idea what to wear when I go to work every morning, then you're helping them solve a pain point. So coming up with killer content, 
Now, I recommend visiting a site called BuzzSumo, buzzsumo.com, and then you can enter a keyword into BuzzSumo or even a competitor's domain name, and it's going to display the most shared posts on that topic, which is a gold mine of information because now you see which topics people actually enjoy reading about the most. So look for topics that are doing well, but then also try to find how you can add your own spin on it to make it even more useful. So this is a great strategy to help you come up with new ideas for your content that you know people in your niche will love. And this is just an example of what BuzzSumo looks like. So I believe I typed in grow your Instagram and then I got these different ideas. You can see the very first one is how to use hashtags on Instagram to grow your reach. And so now I could kind of take that knowledge and create an even better post on using hashtags to grow your Instagram now that I know that it's a really popular topic. Now you also wanna get on video. And I'm thanking myself right now for picking this lovely screenshot of a video that I did. This is a Facebook Live. Now, I recommend getting on video for some of your content because you're going to create a naturally stronger connection with your audience. It's also easier to grow your audience quickly. So I took a couple years, over two years, to get on video to do even just one video for my audience. But the moment I started doing videos, I noticed my authority and my leadership online start to climb really quickly. People were subscribing to my email list more, people were signing up for my courses, and people just seemed more engaged with my blog and the things that I was creating. Because people feel that connection to you when you're on video versus just reading a blog post. They feel like they know you, they feel like they understand your personality, which creates a much deeper connection with your audience. So some ideas are Periscope, Facebook Live, YouTube, webinars like this one, or even Snapchat. Now you also wanna make sure that you're creating evergreen content. So evergreen content is basically timeless content. It doesn't expire. So it's not something like 2016 fashion trends. It would be something more like timeless content where it never has that kind of expiration date where someone can read it a, a year later and still get a ton of value out of it. And again, it will still be relevant on Google and Pinterest a year from now. So that's important because when you're creating content, you don't want it to expire. You want people to be finding that content years later, which is going to really help you grow your traffic and your audience as a blogger. Now you also want to create tall vertical images for your blog posts, along with text on top that has the takeaway inside of the text. So the takeaway here is how to grow your blog like a boss, tips and tricks for smart blogging. But people know exactly what they're going to get out of this post. They know that they're going to get tips for growing their blog. So you want to put that text on top and have those tall vertical images, which do really well on Pinterest. You also want to have some pretty lengthy posts. So I, like I said in the beginning, I used to blog five times a week and my posts were a lot shorter. They weren't as helpful as they are now. Now my posts are much longer, over a thousand words, but I blog a lot less. So I probably spend less time blogging because I'm not blogging five days a week. I'm blogging once a week or sometimes even less than that. So don't get intimidated by these lengthy posts because ideally you will cut back on how much you're posting. You also wanna add headlines and short paragraphs to your blog posts to make them easier to read and digest, especially if you're writing long posts. And lengthy posts are a lot more shareable because if somebody gets a ton out of your blog posts, they're going to wanna share it. They're going to want to send it to their friends or pin it or tweet it. So consider that when you're writing your blog posts as well. Now growing your blog's audience, so the next step in getting started as a blogger, where and how to do it, so I recommend creating an email list. Of all places to grow your audience, social media, your RSS feed, I recommend creating an email list. Now you can do this with ConvertKit or MailChimp. They're both great email service providers. And focus on growing your email list more than your social media because this is going to really help you hone in on the right people and stay in contact with them more than, say, social media. Now, why are email lists the best? So why do I think that you should grow your email list versus really focusing on social media instead? So on, for an email list, you own your following. No algorithm or company can take your following from you. 
you also have a stronger relationship with your audience because email is really personal. It's like your virtual home online. So if somebody's sending you an email, it feels a lot more personal than if somebody just posts an Instagram photo. And we've seen with the Facebook algorithm and the new Instagram algorithm that's coming out that you don't own your following on those platforms. So if you grow a huge following on social media, that social media platform could take it away whenever they want to. They can change their algorithm. They can make it difficult for you to actually create content that your audience sees. So that's why it's important to have an email list because that can never happen. You own it. There's no algorithm or anything like that to worry about. And people are more likely to buy from you. I'm going to show you an example in just a second, but email lists have much higher rates of people buying from them than social media. And it ensures people see your messages. So let me show you an example here, what I mean by that. Now let's compare. So when I had about 10,000 Instagram followers, I was getting around 300 likes per post, which is about 3% of my following, seeing my posts and engaging with them. Now emails, on the other hand, have an average of about 30 to 40% open rates, meaning 30 to 40% of the people on my email list actually open my emails and read them. Now, both of those statistics might sound low, but that's kind of the game we're playing online. But considering if I have 10,000 email subscribers, that's 3,000 to 4,000 people opening and reading my emails compared to 300 on Instagram. So hopefully you can see how powerful your email list really is. So do you want your content, do you want to create content that's seen by 3% of your following or by 30 to 40%? Now, a simple list building strategy is add content upgrades to your popular blog posts. So content upgrades give something away for free in exchange for an email address. We're going to get into these in just a second. So a content upgrade, a really good one, should help people take action on what you just taught them in your blog post. So to take action on your blog post content, for example, if you just described a strategy in your blog post, give them some worksheets or a workbook that will help them implement that strategy that you just talked about. So think of it as kind of like the next step. What do they need to implement what you just taught them in your blog post? So here's an example from one of my blog posts. They're scrolling down the post and then boom, they see this image that says download the free from blogger to business workbook. They click that, an opt-in form comes up where they can put their name and email address and click the submit button. And now I will send them this workbook for free. So this blog post was about turning your blog into a business. So this workbook is really fitting and really relevant to that post because it helps them take action on what they just learned within that blog post. Adding content upgrades can massively increase your email list really quickly. I also teach email marketing and I have students who come to me and they implement this strategy and within like a month, they have a thousand new subscribers to their email list. It's crazy how effective it can be and how people are not really implementing it as much as they can be. Now, once you have enough content upgrades where you've created those little worksheets or eBooks um, or different things to elevate your blog posts, you can create a resource library. Now, you may have seen the resource library I have on my site where I have about 20 different things that you could download from workbooks and eBooks and checklists and cheat sheets and all different kinds of things to help you really get a handle on your blog business. So a resource library is a great way to get more people to opt into your list because it feels super valuable and you're already creating the content upgrades that you can just put inside of your resource library anyways. Now, I don't know how many people in here have a full-time job or kids or something that takes up a whole bunch of your time, but I want to talk a little bit about time-saving systems because I don't think it's fair to talk about getting started as a blogger without talking about systems to help you do it faster because blogging can be overwhelming if you're trying to do everything at once or you don't know the next step to take. So let's talk about some time-saving systems you can use to really save time and be more efficient. All right, quick sip of water there, my friends. So number one is batching, batching. So batching is when you clump similar tasks together so that you don't have any context switching. Context switching is when you're 
on Facebook, responding to the comments. And then just kind of sporadically, you're like, I'm gonna outline my next blog post. And then you do that for 10 minutes and then you're like, uh, now I'm gonna record a video. So you're going between all of these different tasks. You don't really have a focus in mind. So you're, you're wasting a lot of time. So batching is when you just pick one task and you go for it. So I recommend setting aside specific days for certain tasks. For example, you could have Monday be your marketing and promotion day. Tuesday could be your blog post creation day. Wednesday could be your video recording day, etc. So you're not switching between different tasks and you're really able to get a lot more done because you get into that sense of flow and you accomplish way more in less time. This might sound simple, my friends, I understand, but this is a huge strategy that you should be implementing. When I teach this to my students, they always come back to me and say, oh my goodness, that sounded really simple. I didn't implement it for way too long. And then the moment I did, I got so much done in that week. So it really helps you to be more productive when you get into that sense of flow. Now, I also recommend creating process checklists. So a process checklist is basically just a checklist for everything that you need to accomplish, everything that you need to accomplish for a specific task. So when you go to create a blog post, do you ever sit there and you're like, what should I do next? Oh, I need to create a blog post image. Okay, what do I do next? Oh, I need to share this on social media. And you're kind of thinking about what are all the steps that you need to do when you create a blog post. But if you have a checklist for all of those big tasks, then it really cuts out a lot of the time that you would otherwise be taking to think about what do you have to do next or you might just be forgetting things that you should be doing so this can be a really good strategy to implement to help you save time and really accomplish all of the things that need to be done also helping when determining how long to set aside for a task so if you're thinking i have two hours is that enough time to write a blog post you can check your process checklist and see how long each task on your checklist takes. Now, automation. Automation means that you have part of your business running on autopilot, on autopilot. So it's a lot easier for you to basically take time away from your blog or focus on other things because part of it is automated. So using things like social media schedulers, like Buffer, or later.com or board booster are great alternatives to help you automate your social media or creating email sequences. So making sure that you have some email sequences that are going out automatically. So you're not always sending a newsletter every week and trying to think of what do I send to my audience? And also scheduling blog posts. So if you're batching, you can batch those blog posts together and then schedule them out for the entire month. So you're not having to worry about creating a blog post every single week. <coughs> Sorry about that, my friends. I'm getting over a little cold here. Um, and next, I recommend a project management software like Asana. So Asana is a digital planner that you can use to basically plan out your schedule on a daily basis. It's also free, which is a major plus. So I recommend planning tasks for each day, not just when something is due. So the kind of problem that we have is we put on our calendar, I'm going to finish a blog post and publish it on Wednesday. But then Wednesday comes around and we're like, oh, shoot, I completely forgot or I didn't do anything uh, to prep that blog post. So instead, what I recommend is having monthly plan ahead days where you basically plan out at the end of a month for the upcoming month, you plan out all of the big tasks that you want to do, like create a blog post or grow your social media following to X amount of followers or grow your email list, etc. So you plan out all the big things that you want to accomplish in the upcoming month. And then in Asana, you put each individual task that you would need to do to accomplish that goal. So maybe on Monday, you create your blog post image. Tuesday, you write your blog post content, finish everything up, and then it will be finished by Wednesday on your deadline that you put into Asana. So nowadays, I can go on spontaneous vacations without worrying about what needs to get done while I'm away because I have this automation and these systems in place. <coughs> 
Okay, my friends, let's chat. So with better systems, do you think you'd be able to accomplish your blogging goals faster? With better systems, do you think you'd be able to accomplish your blogging goals faster? Do you feel like you have systems in place? Do you feel like you're kind of guessing when it comes to uh, what you need to be doing next? Do you feel like you could be automating more? Let me know in the chat. Do you think you'd be able to accomplish more of your blogging goals if you had better systems in place? So Vivi says, I need a good system really bad. I'm all over the place. Totally get that. Sana? Is that Sana? Nice name. I hear yes, yes. I see a lot of yeses. Taylor says yes. Doing everything and nothing at the same time. I feel you there, my friend. Uh, Michelle says yes. We've got a lot of people saying yes, yes, yes. I need better systems. I totally get it. I was there too about a year or two ago <laughs> and it took me forever to do everything blogging related. Now, finally, we wanna talk about monetizing your blog like a boss, including what does and doesn't work when you try to earn money as a blogger. So let's go through a few of the different ways that you can earn money as a blogger. And just to tell you up front, I've tried all of these different methods. So I feel like I've got a good idea of how all of these work, the pros and cons, et cetera. So traditional blog monetization, let's see what this is. So you might have guessed it's ads, sponsored posts, and affiliates. So traditional blog monetization, when you think about how do bloggers earn money, you probably think of these three things, ads, sponsored posts, and affiliates. Now, what's the problem with these methods? So using ads, sponsored posts, and affiliates is not really the best way to go about things because you're relying on somebody else's business. You're relying on someone else's business. You're also, and this is big, growing your blog for people to click away. So you're spending all this time growing your traffic, growing your following, growing your social media and your email list and getting people to really fall in love with your blog. And then you're putting ads all over your site or you're doing sponsored posts with the entire goal being to have those people click away from your website and go to that other brand's website, which sounds bonkers to me because you're spending all this time growing your own blog only to send people to some other person's company when you could be spending all that time creating your own business. Now, another option is services. I ran a web design business and a blog coaching business for two years. So I feel pretty well schooled in the services industry. Now, the problem with services is that there's a ceiling. So you can only charge so much. There's no way that I could charge for a web design for somebody's website $50,000. There was no way that I could do that. So there's a ceiling where you can only charge so much for your services and you only have so much time in the day. So if you want or need to earn more money, you have to take on more clients, but we know that this is not always possible because you only have 24 hours in a day. So you can't necessarily just take on a million clients to reach your income goals. You have to kind of cut it somewhere. So there's a ceiling for how much you can earn and how many people you can help. Now physical products. So I actually used to have an Etsy shop as well where I sold physical products. So physical products, the problem is that the more you sell, the more you have to pay for supplies and workers. It's not something that you can easily scale your business and sell more and more and make more money because if you do sell more, then you've got almost a problem on your hands. You now have to hire people and find more supplies and package more shipping stuff and it just takes a really long time. It's also a high investment to get started. So I didn't even make back the investment that I put into my physical product business with all the things that I had to buy in the beginning. So I actually took a loss when I started this particular business because it just took a lot of time and it had a high investment to get started. Now what I focus on doing is creating e-courses. So my philosophy behind this is that you can create an e-course once and then you can sell it for years and years versus all of the other types of businesses I talked about where this is really not the case. So you're not exchanging your hours for dollars like you would be in a service-based business, which means that it's really easy to scale your business because you create that one e-course and the same amount of work goes into it roughly to sell 10 e-courses 
as it does to sell a thousand e-courses. So you're not spending a ton of extra time. You're just creating this one course and you're able to sell it over and over and over again. And one of my favorite things about e-courses is that it has a very low initial investment, which is about 50 to $150. So super inexpensive to get started. I'm actually gonna show you some tools that you can use in just a second where you could get started with an e-course for 50 bucks. And e-courses are similar to blogging. So if you like blogging, where you're sharing information, you're helping people, you're creating a community, and you're teaching something, it's basically the exact same thing that you're doing on your blog. It's just in a different format. So if you are comfortable with blogging, you are very well equipped to create a successful e-course. Now, just to give you a little graph here, here's my income increase. So when I was doing ads, sponsored posts, all that kind of stuff, I was making a very small amount of money. Then when I started doing services, my income kicked up a notch and I was earning a full-time income. I was doing okay. But then when I started launching online, in, online courses, I saw a 500% increase in just one year from my previous year's income. So just consider that with online courses, you can grow a faster income, um, a larger income, and doing it a lot faster than you would if you were doing some other kind of monetization method. Now, some of my favorite course creation tools, and I told you I'd tell you how to get started for 50 bucks. So Teachable is what I use to host my courses, create sales pages, and sell my courses. It's basically a software that lets you upload your course and sell it to people. It gives people a username and a password, and it's an amazing, streamlined, modern-looking piece of software. It's also super easy to use if you are a technophobe and have no idea what you're doing online. <laughs> um, Teachable has a free plan that you can start on. They also have other plans that you can upgrade to as you go, but when you get started, you can start on their free plan. And then on the right here for recording your screen, so when you do a presentation on Keynote or PowerPoint down there at the bottom, which are free, they come with your computer. Um, if you do a presentation in Keynote or PowerPoint, then you can record your screen with ScreenFlow, Camtasia, or QuickTime. Now I use ScreenFlow, but QuickTime is actually free if you have a Mac. It comes with your computer and they have a screen recording component. You would just need to edit your video in something like iMovie um, or another free piece of video editing software. So that's another free tool that you can use. The only thing that you would need to buy is a microphone. That's actually the microphone I'm using right now. So if you like the sound of this presentation, then you can get that nice sound for about 50 or $60. So you really don't need to invest in a lot of things to create a successful e-course. You basically just need what's right here on the screen. Now your e-course process, how do you make this happen? So first you wanna outline your course and I'm doing another free workshop on Thursday all about how to pick your course topic and outline your course. So make sure to come back for that workshop. Then create your course slides, typically in Keynote or PowerPoint. Record your course, so using the software I just showed you, ScreenFlow, Camtasia, or QuickTime. Finish up your course videos, then upload it to your course website, which, as I showed you in the previous slide, would be Teachable, which is what I use and recommend. Create your sales page, which you can also do in Teachable. And then launch your freaking course, which you can launch again and again, and you can create different ways to sell your course on autopilot. So this is kind of the gist of what goes into creating an e-course. It seems like, oh my goodness, an e-course is this giant thing that I have to create, but it's a lot more manageable than you'd think. And you can have an e-course up and for sale within about 30 days. Now, my friends, here is why you probably showed up today. So you wanted to find your niche so that you can grow your audience more quickly. You need a system that will help you grow and monetize your blog and you wanna know the best steps to get started as an ambitious blogger. So I wanna tell you that it's time for you to turn your blog into a profitable system and community, which is why you came here, right? So profitable system and community where you get to help people, where you're seen as the leader, and where you're able to dramatically grow your income. Now don't forget, that I started my blog on a shoestring budget with a job that paid $30,000 a year. 
And don't forget that I am not special. I didn't have any fancy resources or a savings account. I, I think I had zero dollars in my savings account when I started my blog. No fancy resources or connections, but I was still able to use my blog to create a multiple six-figure business in less than three years. So don't forget that if I can do this, so can you, my friend. Now you have a choice today. So you can take the overwhelming, expensive, and time-consuming route of doing what I did, trying to figure all of this stuff out on your own, which would likely take you a few years, just being honest. Or you could do the shortcut to success using my proven strategies. So I've taken the best of what I know, what I've learned, and what has gotten me the best results in the fastest amount of time. So you can take that shortcut, or you can take the overwhelming route, <laughs> which is what I did. So if you want to take the shortcut to success, then I recommend checking out Blog to BizHive. Now, Blog to BizHive is my online program that shows you my step-by-step -step process to grow your audience and turn your blog into a wildly successful e-course business. So in module one of Blog to BizHive, we're going to talk about growing your traffic and improving your SEO or search engine optimization. So we'll talk about fresh strategies to grow your traffic and improve your SEO, how to utilize my Pinterest methods, which you may have heard about, to see a quick surge of traffic, and the same strategies I use to triple my traffic in six months. Now, this is one of my students, Megan. She said, since signing up for Blog to BizHive, my blog traffic has doubled each month, my Pinterest account is on fire, and I have a newsletter system in place. And you want to know the best part? I didn't have to spend hours upon hours searching the internet trying to find the answers. Now, in module two, you'll learn email list basics, like what to send your list on a regular basic basis, how to create perfect lead magnets and content upgrades to grow your list exponentially, and you'll learn the email sequence that every new sub subscriber, subscriber, <laughs> every new subscriber should get. In module three, we'll talk about several different strategies you can use to grow your email list and your tribe online. So these are fresh strategies that I use to grow my list by 30,000 subscribers in only one year. You'll also create a list of people who will want to buy your product and e-course before it's even released. Now this is Marianne, she's one of my students from Blog to BizHive, and she said that she had less unsubscribers, a bigger list, and a lot more engagement from the people on her list after going through Blog to BizHive. Module four, you'll map out your course. So you'll come up with a money-making course idea. Even if you don't feel like you're an expert or you're currently like, I have no idea what I'd create a course about, don't worry, we'll come up with an awesome idea. You'll create and outline the best content for your course. And we'll talk about pricing and then naming your course like a boss. In module five, you'll build your first course. So we'll tackle the tech side of your course, like payment options and course websites. You'll write a killer sales page that converts. And you'll learn how to create an awesome course without ever needing to be on camera. So if you're camera shy, I'll show you how to create a course that converts without ever having to be on camera yourself. And in module six, we'll talk about launching and marketing that e-course. So I'll give you some basic launch schedules and things that you can do for your very first launch. And then I'll give you a more complex launch schedule that you can implement when you feel a little bit more seasoned in the e-course realm. You also get email marketing swipe copy for your email sequences, copy and paste, and how to plan and present the perfect webinar for your launch. Now this is Cassie, she's one of my other Blog to BizHive students, and she said, I can honestly say that the greatest decision I made for my business in 2015 was choosing to enroll in the Blog to BizHive. After implementing Melissa's strategies in BBH, we opened enrollment for our signature e-course and tripled our previous sales, making over $12,000 during our two-week launch. Boom. And you'll also get a bonus module of tech training. So if you're like, uh, I don't know how to do all the technology and I'm scared that I'm gonna get kind of left behind, then do not worry, I include an entire module of tech trainings. So you'll learn how to do everything it takes to grow your email list and launch your course from a tech point of view as well. Now we will not stop there, my friends. I've got a few different bonuses for you. 
So bonus number one is four group coaching sessions with me. So I'll be live on camera there to answer any and all of your questions related to the course material, growing your blog, um, creating an e-course. And these are just as much Q&A and coaching sessions as they are implementation sessions. So if you are somebody who kind of procrastinates on your goals and needs somebody to really kick your butt to actually get moving, then these coaching sessions will really help you because I am not gonna let you slack off and I'm going to make you do the work and start seeing progress ASAP. You'll also get a mastermind and accountability partner. So this is one of my favorite bonuses. We're going to give you a, an in-depth survey about you as a person, as a blogger, and then we're going to find somebody who we feel is your perfect match. And then you two will get together We've got some guidelines for how you can communicate and when to communicate, what to talk about, but you two will be able to get together over email or over video chat and start strategizing and bouncing ideas off of each other. So this is really somebody that you can mastermind with to help you grow your blog faster. They'll also keep you accountable because we all know we need that sometimes to actually stick with our goals. And we talked about Teachable a little bit earlier. It's what I use to host and upload and sell my e-courses. You're gonna get three months of Teachable's Pro Plan, which is about a $300 value. So this is a great opportunity for when you're launching your course and you'll have all of the features that Teachable offers. It's a, it's a really good plan to be on when you're on a launch. And then you can just downgrade your plan back to the free plan or one of their inexpensive plans when your launch is over. And of course, they'll get access to a private student Facebook group, which is where I hang out, where I'm able to answer your questions, and where all the other students in the course will be hanging out too. And my friend Jenna Sword, she is going to give you Launch Your Lead Magnet, which is her e-course that shows you how to plan, design, and launch a lead magnet, which is basically your content upgrades. So if you want to learn how to create worksheets, workbooks, and different kind of PDF guides, and this is the perfect course to help you do that, to help you grow your email list. And another bonus, and we've got a bunch here, you also will get the How to Blog Like a Boss course, which goes through a lot of different things, like how to create killer blog posts. Touched on it a little bit today, but there's so much more that goes into it. You're also going to get a lot of checklists and worksheets and different things, so it's about two hours of content to help you really create a successful blog. And I told you in the beginning of this webinar that we've got a special bonus just for the people who stick around to the end. So this is a fast action bonus, which is only avail av available, <laughs> only available if you purchase live today. So sorry, replay viewers, not for you, my friends, only if you are here live right now, you'll get the productivity power pack, which includes several different videos and workbooks to help you really create a more productive schedule and routine so that if you've got a full-time job or kids or something that's taking up all your time, then now you have a way to actually reclaim your time, create a better schedule and get more done in less time. You'll also get the 14 part sales page framework, which is a gift coming straight from my personal copywriter. She's amazing. You'll love not only her personality, but the amazing gifts that she gives you in this training on how to create a killer sales page that sells. Now the total value of all of that stuff is $3,082, which is an insane amount of money. So I don't wanna charge you that much. I wanna make this more affordable for you so that you all can jump in on this system and this course that will help you grow your audience and your income as a blogger. So your investment today is $97. So not three grand, but 97 bucks. And then followed by six more monthly payments of 97. Or you could do the one-time payment of 597. So either a seven month payment plan of 97, or you'd get access to everything for $97 today, or 597 one-time payment. Now the course will be released on June 15th, which is in about a week from now. So we've got a little bit of time, but you will be getting some bonuses today. So you can get started on the content right away. Now I haven't really seen other people do this with their blogging courses, but I'm gonna offer a 60 day guarantee. So if you do the work, you show me your results, and you still aren't happy with the course, 
it will gladly give you a refund within 60 days. So no 14 day, no 30 day, and then that business, 60 days. Two months to try out my strategies, see how you like them, see how they work for you, and you can have your money back if you do the work and decide that you didn't really get results. So my friends, you can get started now, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So click the blue button below this video, or if you want the payment plan, just scroll to the bottom of the page, click the blue button to enroll in blog to biz hive and then you'll be taken to a page that looks like this. So you can either create your account like this on the left, or if you already are a student of mine, you can click the login button at the bottom, register your account, and then you'll be taken to a page like the one on the right, where you can make your payment through PayPal or through a credit card. So my friends, if you want to dramatically grow your traffic, grow your email list and create an online community, and launch a ridiculously profitable online course without spending years trying to figure everything out yourself, then I encourage you to join blog to biz hive which is where I show you how to grow your audience, how to grow your traffic, and how to create a profitable blog by selling e-courses. So I'm going to start the fast action bonus. Now remember the fast action bonus was the productivity power pack um, which includes videos and worksheets and different things to help you become more productive. And then also that 14 part sales page framework from my own personal copywriter. So we've got 15 minutes. We're going to do a live Q and a right now. I'm going to see what questions you all have. And the uh, fast action bonus will be available until the end of the Q and a for the next 15 minutes. All right. So let me take a look here. See what questions we've got. Okay. Okay, so Diane says, how long does the course take? Um, the course, so it's six modules. Each module is about one to one and a half hours of video content, and then it will have some worksheets within each module as well. So I like to say that you should budget about two to three hours per week, but kind of consider that this is going to take away from some of the other blogging tasks that you're already doing. So if you're spending a lot of time on your blog now, then you'll be able to focus on blog to BizHive to create a better strategy. So you'll focus on this course and then implement the strategies. So it's going to take you less time than you'd otherwise be taking for your blog because you'll know exactly what to be focusing on. So I, that's how much I would budget each week, but you will get all of the modules on June 15th. So it's up to you if you want to start on that particular day or you can postpone it and start whenever you want because you have lifetime access to the course. Okay, let's uh, Megan said, I took the course the first time around and it's so good, worth every penny. Thank you, my dear. That's awesome to hear. Megan was in the presentation too. I hope you all saw her. Let's see here. Okay, so we've got, how can I offer an e-course if I have a travel themed blog about Las Vegas? about Las Vegas. Okay, I mean, that is actually a great topic. So think about what is the kind of information that people want to purchase from you or want to learn from you on your blog, which is why it's so important to have some informational content on your blog, because you want to make sure that you're teaching people something. So consider that people are coming to you for your blog about Las Vegas, because they want to plan out a killer trip to Las Vegas. So you could have a course on how to plan your killer trip to Las Vegas or how to plan the perfect bachelorette party in Las Vegas. Um, so thinking kind of what are the how to's that you can teach someone based on your niche and your topics and how can you transform that into an e-course. And then in blog to biz hive, we do go into much more depth on this topic, how to pick your e-course idea and how to really come up with a course, even if you feel like you have no course to teach, don't worry, we will come up with a profitable course idea. Okay, let's see. Yay, Ray is in. Welcome, Ray. Um, is there lifetime access? Absolutely. Absolutely. You definitely get lifetime access to the course and any updates. Okay. 
Okay, I love this question. Is this course beneficial if I'm starting over from zero? Rebranding and not keeping any of my old blog content, hardly any blog readers and no email subscribers, is it worth it? My answer is absolutely. So I created this course with both levels of blogging in mind, both for people who already have a little bit of an audience and for people who are starting from zero. So consider it might take you a little bit longer to start seeing like massive income from your blog if you're starting at zero, but you're going to be starting with a much stronger foundation than if you just tried to wing it and grow your blog on your own. So we do go into the first half of the course, in fact, is growing your traffic and growing your audience. So those are both topics that are perfect for people who are starting out. And then once you get a little bit more advanced, you've grown a little bit of an audience and an email list. Then we talk about grow or creating your e-course and launching that course to earn an income as a blogger. So yes, good for people who are brand new to blogging or starting out with not much um, and also people who have a steady blog already. So Inda says, is there any assistance in how to fine tune and validate your blog idea? Yes, so we do have the implementation coaching sessions where you can come, you can tell me your blog ideas and I'll be able to help you really hone in on which ideas are actually going to be profitable for your e-course or your blog, I mean, wherever you're at in your kind of journey right now, uh, but I'll be able to give you some targeted feedback on you specifically. So not just general information, but information that pertains just to you and your blog on how you can really hone in on those successful topics. Okay, so Michelle says, I just bought Pinfinite Growth two days ago, which is my Pinterest marketing course. Would the same content be covered in this course regarding Pinterest? So this course doesn't quite cover as much as what's in Pinfinite Growth. Um, Pinfinite Growth is an entire course about Pinterest marketing, so there's a lot more to cover. But Pinterest is covered in module one of blog to biz hive to help you grow your traffic. So honestly, I would say, and I've had students who have taken both courses, and they tell me that it's definitely different material and different enough where they're getting a lot out of both courses. Um, so I wouldn't worry about there being too much overlap where it makes it not worth it to have both courses. So looks like, is it Greg? Cincy Greg, I wanna do a web development blog, but obviously that would be pretty broad, a pretty broad topic. I'm good at both back-end programming for WordPress and front-end styling with CSS and SAS. Do I need to pick one or the other for my niche? Um, so I'm not super familiar with both of those terms. They seem similar enough to me uh, that they would fit on one blog, back-end programming and front-end styling. Um, but it could be that you'd be able to grow your blogs faster if you separated those topics, if they're very different in the kind of development world. Sorry, that's not super helpful. <laughs> I'm not completely familiar with those development terms. Okay, let's see about more questions we've got here, my friends. Okay. Uh, what do you use to create your post images? So I use Photoshop to create mine, but you could use something called Canva, which is a free software. It's even easier to use than Photoshop. Comes with templates that are really nice um, that you can customize. So Canva is what I generally recommend to people who are looking for an easier and free solution, but Photoshop is obviously a fantastic resource as well for creating blog post images. Um, do you need to already have a blog? So we kind of covered this a second ago, but absolutely not. You don't need to have a blog already. This will really help you get your blog off the ground. So it's a great way to actually get your blog started and get that running start as a blogger. All right, let's see. Yay, I see an excellent, I'm sold. Time to rewrite my budget to make this happen. Love it. I love that you're making the space for uh, your own education. That's awesome. I see. Oh my God, I'm so camera shy. 
I feel ya. I have a lot of students who are also camera shy, which is why I teach you how to create a course without having to be on camera. You can even do webinars without having to be on camera. So I teach you that in the course as well. So don't worry, don't let that hold you back. Um, if you have these dreams to create a course or grow your blog, don't let the camera shy thing really hold you back here. Okay, let's see here are my friends. I'm sorry if my nose sounds a little bit stuffy. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> surprise cough for you. I'm getting over a cold or a sinus infection or something, but there was no way I was going to cancel this webinar. wanted to rock it for you all, so hopefully it was okay, even though I'm a little bit sick right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, okay, good question here. Any tips for rebranding a blog that is currently about lifestyle? I like many topics. So, my friend, that's exactly what my blog was like before I, I started the niche that I'm in right now. I blogged about a ton of topics. I was more or less a lifestyle blogger. I, I just kind of blogged about things that I liked. And people think that you need to have this big transition or party or launch to tell people that you're going to be just talking about one topic. What I did was I just started converting my blog content to that co topic. I didn't really make a big scene out of it. I didn't tell people that I was only going to be blogging about this one topic because I knew that some people in my audience wouldn't like it and some people would be really down for the transition. So I would just kind of naturally progress into the new topic that you want to hone your niche in on and then just go with it that way. So don't worry about making a big like production out of it. Just start honing in on that niche. Some people will unsubscribe or leave, totally fine. And other people will stick around and stay, but you're going to see some more rapid growth because you're honing in on more of a specific topic. <laughs> Thank you. Quit apologizing for being sick. You're doing great. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. So is growing organic food in a limited space in an urban setting too specific? I'm also into urban home setting and making things from scratch, cheese, yogurt, mayonnaise, cleaner, soaps, revisiting culinary techniques of old as well as healthy eating. Oh my goodness, my friend, <laughs> it is not too specific. I, lo I love that niche because you're really honing in on those specific types of people. So this would be more of a demographic niche where there are people who are going to be interested in all of those things. So it's specific, but when you find the people who are interested in those things, those are your people. It's like they're not going to be interested in other stuff out there. They're really going to be focused in on what you're giving them because it's so specific on their interest. And like reading your post there, there's so many things that you could teach. Like think about where you were a year ago or two years ago um, and think about the things that you needed to learn to learn about growing organic food in an urban setting or homesteading or all of the different topics that you talked about, making things from scratch. Like where were you when you first, first, first got into all of those different things? And how can you teach somebody to really get into those things in less time? So I think that that's a perfect example of a niche that would work well for a blog and an e-course. Okay. A uh, good question here. Do you take down the posts you posted before you found your niche? It's kind of up to you. What I did is I went back and if there was anything that's super irrelevant to my niche, then I just redirected it to my homepage. Um, I, I wouldn't delete any posts because you don't want to have those broken links on your blog, but you can redirect it to your homepage. So that way you don't have all these random things that people are finding on your website um, and you can hide those posts as well so that people are not stumbling upon them from Google and whatnot and then just make it a little bit more niche specific in that way. So just FYI, we have two minutes until the fast action bonus ends. So two more minutes until the fast action bonus, which is the productivity power pack and the 14 part sales page framework. So two more minutes and then those expire. So I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can in the next two minutes, but I do want to give a shout out to the people who just joined the course. So we have Catherine, welcome. Irina, is that how you say your name? Love it. Welcome. Simona, welcome. Or Simone, I'm sorry. Robin, welcome. Leticia, welcome. Hannah, welcome. 
Stephen, welcome. John, welcome. Sarah, welcome to the course. Jessica, welcome. Maya, hello and welcome. Diane, welcome. Ernie, welcome. Cool spelling, Ernie. Bonnie, welcome. Susan, welcome. Christina, welcome. And Elise, welcome. So excited to have you all on the course. Um, I can't wait to get to know you all better. Are the slides in this webinar made in Keynote? Yes, they are. Uh, amazing how you break down everything. Thank you. I'm really glad to hear that. Let's see here. I'm working with two primary niches, how to launch a VA business, but also tools and strategies for small business owners to implement if they aren't ready to hire a VA. Is that too many niches or should I stick with only one? Um, I would try doing both and then see how those posts go. Do you get equal amounts of um, interaction and engagement from both parties or is it really just like one type of post works best? And also keep in mind when you create your email list, it's gonna be really important to segment your list so you're not creating this giant list, but you're creating basically two lists, one for aspiring VAs, virtual assistants, and one for business owners who want to DIY their own virtual assisting type of stuff. So that's gonna be important for you too. Thanks for answering my question, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, well, we'll say the timer just ran out, but we will say we'll go until 12.20, four more minutes, 12.20 Pacific time and answer some more questions. So if you do, um, enroll in the course by 1220, I'll give you the fast action bonuses too. I'll get you in on those too, my friends. Okay. Uh, Nydia asks, is creating e-courses actually a must to grow traffic on blogs? So creating e-courses will help you grow your traffic. I, I do have to say I saw a an uptick in my traffic and my basically authority and leadership online when I started creating e-courses, like more interviews, uh, more requests to speak at conferences, things like that. Definitely saw that. As for traffic, um, you can create things like free email courses to give to your audience in order to grow your email list. So you create this free email course, you send one lesson per day, or something along those lines, and then people can give you their email address to sign up for free. So that's a great way to grow your email list, but or to grow your traffic in your email list. But generally, creating e-courses is a way to increase your income. That's the biggest thing that we're focused on. The other stuff is kind of like an added bonus. It's like icing on the cake. Um, but I'm really focused on helping you increase your income and really start blogging full time or making this a really viable side income project for you. OK, so Dee says, I want to write about saving money and debt payoff while teaching abroad? Are those topics too separate? Um, personally, I think that those are kind of too different to clump into one blog. I think you could do a fantastic job of having either two blogs where one is about debt payoff and saving money and the other one is about teaching abroad. I think those could both be fantastic topics, but putting them together is a little bit specific unless there is some sort of big niche out there of people who are teaching abroad so that they can pay off their debt. I would do a little research on that and see um, if, that, if that seems like an audience that is big enough to create a whole blog about. Okay, so how could you, I love this question, how could you monetize a healthy food blog without using ads, sponsored posts, and affiliates? All right, my friend. So I hope you were here for the presentation, but I think that you should absolutely focus on e-courses. Um, a healthy food blog is a fantastic type of blog to create an e-course from. Because think again, where are your, where were you a few years ago before you were into healthy eating, before let's say it's a paleo blog or something like that, before you were, were into paleo, where were you? What were you doing? What kind of struggles did you face as you were converting into this paleo lifestyle or this healthy eating lifestyle? Um, what did you have to overcome? What did you have to learn? What kind of meal plan do you eat now? So think about those beginners who are where you were maybe just a year ago. Um, and what can you teach them in your e-course that's going to propel them into healthy eating more quickly? So I've got to tell you, I've been trying to eat healthy, like a vegan lifestyle for at least a year. And it's a struggle for me because I don't know which products to buy. I have a, a hard time coming up with meal plans on a daily basis. It's just hard. So think about where you were before and how you can really help your customers and your students 
get to where you are now. That's the whole kind of um, thing about e-courses. You're helping people who are where you were six months, one year, two years ago, and you're helping them get to where you are now. All right, peeps, one more minute and then we'll sign off. I'm actually going to uh, stop sharing my screen here so I can see you all again. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I've got my questions over here. Okay, so last question of the day. So Colby asks, how would an e-course translate to a travel blog? I'm having trouble connecting the dots in terms of what people would spend money on from an e-course about travel. So one thing that you will want to keep in mind about creating e-courses is that sometimes you create a course that teaches people how to do what you do, teaches people how to do what you do. So one of my students who got really significant results, she had a five-figure five figure launch um, when she launched her e-course, and she was teaching a course about how to make money while traveling the world, how to make money while traveling the world. So that could be definitely, it would fall under a travel type of e-course because she's teaching people how to do what she does, which is making money while traveling the world. Um, so consider that too. Like maybe it's helping people budget and save and um, earn more money or something so that they can travel more. So consider that when you're thinking about your travel blog or helping people plan their trips. Um, I mean, how am I, <laughs> I'm planning a trip right now to Thailand and Japan and it's taken quite a long time. And I've been to both of those places before, but it still takes so long to plan that entire trip out. So could you create an e-course that gives them the entire it itinerary of the best places to go um, that saves them a lot of time because they don't have to look up all that stuff themselves? So think about with any type of e-course you're creating, how are you helping people get, get to that point where they're saving time, saving money, and they're learning what you know that's going to help them kind of accomplish their goal. You got this. <laughs> okay, my friends. So, so thankful that you were here today. Um, and so thankful for all the people who joined blog to biz hive today. I can't wait to get started with you all. We have an amazing group who's part of this course already. Um, and I think you all will really enjoy meeting them in the Facebook group. So I will see you hopefully here tomorrow, again at 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, tomorrow we're talking about how to grow your email list to have a really successful e-course launch. Um, even if you are not ready to launch an e-course yet, the tips tomorrow are going to be fantastically, fantastically, is that a word? <laughs> it is now. Uh, fantastically helpful for you when growing your audience so that you can eventually monetize your blog. So be here tomorrow. You'll get an email uh, with an invitation for tomorrow's workshop. Same time, same place. Um, and that should be a really amazing uh, strategy and system we're going to be talking about tomorrow. All right, my friends, I am so grateful for you and I'll see you here tomorrow. Thank you for coming. Have an awesome rest of your day.